Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So delighted, so excited that you are here, that you are joining me on this platform. My name is Kashina Bago, and as you can see, my husband is not in the video today, but I'll update you later on as to what the Lord is doing with us in this season. This season is one of those seasons that it is very, I should say, it is very uncomfortable to the flesh. You know, sometimes the Lord has you in this season where he wants you to know that you must depend on him in all things. Um, so in October to November, we had two programs that were running together, Courting 2020 and Break the Delay. Shout out to all 569 of you who register for Break the Delay. It was an absolutely phenomenal program. And I miss you ladies, come on. So uh, we had Break the Delay going on and also our Dare membership program, Courting 2020, that just ended last week. But after Break the Delay ended, the Lord told us that he wanted us to take a break. Even though we were fired up and we were ready to come back on YouTube, his instructions were to take a break for the rest of November. So in my husband and I, in our minds, we're gonna be you know, up and ready in December, all fired up to, to come back on YouTube and to share content and you know, just to edify everyone who watches this channel. But some days when I'm upbeat and I'm ready to go, my husband is like, okay, I don't think I can do it today. And sometimes he's ready and he's like, let's do it. And I'm walking around the, the house like a sloth, like zero energy. <laughs> so guys, we have two under two plus a 10 year old at this point. So life is, ju life is just a little crazy. We're still adjusting um, to moving to Georgia. So things are just, you know, we're just in that crazy state. So we were always thinking that, you know what, the perfect time we're going to be doing these videos, but we, we just haven't stumbled on the perfect timing as of yet, where both of us can come before you. Cause I think once the children get older, they require way more attention. And it's just, we're just in one of those seasons. The Lord gave me a dream just last night and he wanted us to share with you guys the, in the moments, the season that he has us in, um, the struggles that we have, the battles that we have to fight, um, the things that he's really trying to develop in our character. I know a lot of times we tend to share the breakthrough, we tend to share the testimony, you know, when the Lord has completed the work. But for this specific journey, I think the Lord is impressing on our hearts to share as we're going through, you know, these daily battles and daily warfares. So we're gonna be doing that, um, let's hope towards the ending of December, early January, really speaking about what the Lord has been teaching us in this season, how he's molding our character, and how even as we, we elevated in God, how he's stretching our faith more than ever before. So that is a season that we're in. So I'm hoping that we can be more consistent you may see one, you may see the other, but what we want to do is we will always want to make sure that we are putting content out there, you know, where we're sharing or testimony, whether by myself, as I said, or my husband is with me, again, just to edify everyone. Because for both of us to come together before you, it is a hard struggle. It is hard with so many children running around in the house. <laughs> so guys, in today's video, I really wanted to share um, a, a testimony of redemption. We know that the Lord said in his word that he will restore the years that the, the, the locust and the canker worm have stolen. And as my husband and I, we were talking about this, I, I decided to really share this on YouTube. And as a matter of fact, one of our subscribers pointed out what I'm about to share with you, but it's just to really show you that God is good. So it doesn't matter what you have been through in life. It doesn't matter how much the enemy tried to steal from you, to rob blessings and to rob you of your joy and your peace. I'm here to encourage you that remain faithful in God. Remain faithful in God because I guarantee you that when the Lord begins to restore, he will restore to the point where he will shame the enemy for what he robbed you of, right? So I'm going to be really open and really vulnerable um, when I share this story because I feel like we don't see that a lot, especially sometimes in church where everyone tries to portray an image of perfection. 
You guys know me. You guys have been rocking with me for years. You know that there is no skeletons in this closet. Okay, because whatever I can teach and share so you can be strengthened in faith, that is what I am going to do. So guys, I was baptized, right, in 2011. So I got baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, gave my life to Christ, all of that good stuff in 2011. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought that once you gave your life to Christ, life now becomes easy. Right? You're living for the Lord. You're living for Jesus. So life should be easy. I wasn't, even though I was baptized, I wasn't, I didn't go through growth track. Let's just say that. Like, I didn't know that we had a flesh to contend with. I didn't know that there, as soon as you give your life to Christ, there is now warfare behind your decision. And the enemy will try his best for you to turn your back on Christ and go back in the world. So I gave my life to Christ and I wrote about this in my book for those of you who read the book. But to be honest guys, one of the strongholds that I, I had in my life was fornication, right? So I didn't have the proper system. I didn't have any accountability. I didn't have anything. So six weeks, six weeks after I gave my life to Christ, I fell pregnant with my daughter. She's now 10 years old. So six weeks, guys, six weeks. And I want to set up this story for you. When I got baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, I am standing before the church, <laughs> sharing how good God is, sharing what he's done for me, sharing how I was filled and now empowered to go out and make disciples for Christ. Unbeknownst to me that, listen, you, you need to take two seats and figure out how are you going to triumph over sin. But again, I didn't know that was a thing. I thought you gave your life to Christ, life is now easy. So six weeks after I got baptized, I got pregnant, six weeks. And I think I did a video really sharing the details about this, but the testimony, come on now, was not completed. So now I'm just giving you the complete testimony. So I remember, the shame, the embarrassment, the, the condemnation that I felt. Because I mean, a few weeks ago, here I was telling people how good God is, how he saved me. And now carrying the guilt of not only sinning, but a sin where it's a public sin. Like there is no way you can hide a pregnancy. There is no way that you can hide, as we say in Jamaica, a belly, <laughs> right? That thing is obvious. So everyone now knows that you've committed this sinful act. So I remember just really struggling with condemnation, struggling with, you know, feeling less than myself. And the enemy used that moment to begin whisper lies in my ear. Huh and you say you love Jesus, ha, huh? and you say you are a Christian, ha, huh? and you say this, and you should be embarrassed, and it was really a tough time, and at that moment, I was tempted with the decision, it was a temptation to have an abortion, like, why would, why should you get rid of it, you know, because no one will know, and I remember during that time how I was standing firm on God's word, standing firm on the truth, um, I wrote, I remember writing on the back of my, my daughter's sonogram pictures, scriptures that, you know, children are our heritage of the Lord and the fruit of my womb. And I was, I just kept declaring the scriptures over her, over the pregnancy, because my mind was in, it was just not in a good place. So what I did was I stopped going to church out of being embarrassed, out of really having um, this shame and guilt and just this feeling of being condemned by God, you know, that was just how I felt. I didn't understand that that feeling that I, I was having was not from God, but either way, I was walking with shame and guilt and feeling condemned. So I stopped going to church. So I was just home going through those silent battles, you know, again, with the shame and with the embarrassment. And I remember six months later, after being absent from church for six months, I just said to myself, you know what? I know God has forgiven me. Like the fear that I was feeling was not really the fear of God. It was the fear of what man would say. 
I knew God had forgiven me. I had repented of, of, of sinning and but the, the fear wasn't the, the fear for God and his judgment. No, the fear was the fear of how people would perceive me. So I made a decision and I'm like, you know what? The church should be a place uh, where the sick goes, right? Where people who have struggles and issues should have a safe place to go so we could connect with people who are more mature in the faith, who will shepherd us and who will guide us. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna let everyone know, like, this is my story. <sighs> so ladies and gentlemen, the few gentlemen who watch this channel, I went back to church. And I, I'm going to walk you through the experience that I had. So when I went back, I was about six months pregnant at the time, not married. So let me just make that clear. Not married, okay? Now you know why I was feeling all that shame and guilt. <laughs> not married. So I went back to the church, sat down, and I, I can't forget after the church ended, I mean, people were staring me down, you know, the whole entire time because the last time they checked, come on now, a sister wasn't married. So here I was, an obvious fornicator sitting in the midst of, of these people, right? Because again, though this is not a hidden sin thing when you get pregnant. You can fornicate, yes, but when you are pregnant, it's no longer hidden. So I was sitting in the church and the first lady, she, you know, after the church service ended, she was walking my way. And when she saw me with my, you know, six month belly, she was like, ah! right and the look that she had on her face was just a look of disgust like ah! and that was all she said she didn't ask me anything like what is going on i haven't seen you in a while it was just you know i felt as if she just turned her nose like mm, you you're not good enough to be seated at this table i don't know but that was just how i felt so after that, I remember my heart just really being heavy. Um, going through this experience, I was alone. Um, and when I thought that I would have had the support of the church, I didn't have it. So what I did was I decided that I was just going to stop going to church or stop going to that church, right? Because if I changed my church, then no one would know my story. So guys, I changed my church and, um, you know, hoping that I can wipe away the shame, hoping that I could put myself in a, a more welcoming situation, but nothing really changed because the condemnation that I was feeling, the guilt and all of that was going on here, and it was really a, a, a battle between the enemy and myself. But why I really wanted to come before you to share this story of redemption is really to encourage you that it doesn't matter the shame, it doesn't matter what you have done in your life, it doesn't matter what you have been through. I am here to encourage you that God is a restorer and he is a redeemer and whatever the enemy tried to steal from your life. Remember the Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. So whatever the enemy has tried to steal from you or to kill you know, your dreams and to kill your aspirations, to kill your joy, your peace, or destroy in your life, I'm here to encourage you that God came so you could have life and life more abundantly. So again, what I want you to take note of was the six weeks when I gave my life to Christ and the six weeks when I fell instant in fornication, right? Now, let me show you how God restores. Once I've been through um, that, that, that period of really feeling condemned, um, I came upon a place and a time in my walk where God really wanted me to get serious, serious. Because what I did was, even though I knew being in a relationship, right? Having a child out of wedlock was not God's will for me. I reverted to that because I, I thought I had no other options. I thought I didn't have the support that I needed. And I felt like I wasn't confident enough to go through this fight by myself. So what we do, we go back to that place of familiarity. We go back to that place where we feel comfortable. 
So a few years later, the Lord began to impress it on my heart that he wanted me to separate from the relationship that I was in and really cut off every sin, right, that I was encouraging and I was welcoming in my life. And let me remind you again, this was after I got baptized. So I made the decision and I call it the time where the Lord and I rekindled our relationship. And in 2016, I started my journey of singleness. Some of you who watch this channel is currently in your season of singleness. So I started that journey and in that time, the Lord began to reveal to me that, you know, he has somebody for me, but I have to be obedient and allow him to take me through a process of readiness. So in that time of readiness, the Lord began to show me that he's called me to an accelerated arranged marriage, meaning that I will not know the man um, who he has for me on a deeper context, but I am to get married by his voice, by his word. So that was his instructions. So you guys already know my marriage testimony, but it so happened that when my husband and I met in 2019, without me remembering what I have gone through before, it so happened that when I met my husband, six weeks later, we were married. I mean, six weeks, to the T to the date, six weeks later, we were married. The six weeks that I fell into sin, the Lord redeemed that time, and now I met my husband and I got married in that exact six weeks come on now let us praise break and get let us give jesus a praise because again we know that god will redeem our lives he will redeem our stories right the bible tells us that listen all things work out for good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And you are here. You are called according to the Lord's purpose. So no matter what you have been through, I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how embarrassed or how ashamed you may feel. When Jesus died on that cross, he died to cover that sin. And that means there is redemption and restoration that is available to you. What the enemy tried to do to me during that time when I fell because he knew I was weak and he was laughing and making a mockery of me and of my story, God now flipped that thing. So now even through my husband and I, we could empower so many people to wait on God, to believe in him for restoration. So again, unbeknowing to us, without or, or calculations, without us finagling and, and making the Lord told us that, listen, you need to get married in this specific date. And when I was going through that entire story, like I didn't think about the six weeks when I gave my life to Christ and when I ended up pregnant. I wasn't thinking about that. It is actually one of our subscribers who pointed that out to me. And after she said that, I brought it before the Lord, right? And it was like, I sensed the Lord smiling like, you don't know who I am. Like when I restore, I restore. Come on now, when I redeem, I redeem. So ladies, let me tell you, the Lord again will restore the years. He will restore your years. But can he find you faithful? Are you faithful before him? So I really felt led to share this story with you because I know that God will redeem those things that the enemy has previously used to throw us off our course or to throw us in a path of confusion and to rob us and to slow our lives down. If you continue to press and if you continue to remain faithful before God, again, he will restore your years. The Lord will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm have stolen. So you continue to remain faithful in the Lord. You continue to trust in God. You continue to be anchored in faith. So guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. I know the next video my husband will be on to join us. But again, guys, keep believing in God. Keep your faith anchored. Keep trusting because the Lord, again, will restore whatever it is that you have gone through. He will take those things. He will flip them for his glory. Amen. No experience that you have been through will be wasted in Jesus name. Thank you for watching.